Louisiana Beer Reviews. We're looking at a beer from Iceland, and it's Einstock. Icelandic Winter Ale. Icelandic Winter Ale. Now, um, it's definitely winter here. It's cold, but it's nothing like Wisconsin or whatever. But it's cold for us, and it's the humidity makes it bad. Now, uh, <coughs> excuse me. It's very cold holding this bottle, actually. So. All right. So, um, anyway, uh, I have done their wheat beer. Okay, I mm -hmm. did that one before. It was okay. I didn't see. Was what that was. the one that had a blue label? I think I, I think so. There's a too. bunch of the. Oh, you did. I think I because I think I brought you some of their beer before. There, it must have been that one. Okay. They use Icelandic, smoked Icelandic barley. Oh, right. So it could be smoky. And hand-picked spruce tips. And I wrote some of the other facts down. See where I got all these facts on this. Um, it's 8% alcohol. They use Icelandic barley, the smoked, the pale ale malt, crystal malt, and chocolate malt. Ooh, that sounds good. It's just a malt they roast to where it's dark like chocolate. It's mm. not really chocolate. Okay. Right. Bavarian hops, which is a common hop that are used in many beers, like even Bush and Budweiser use Bavarian hops. Okay, and um, it gets a very good score on Beer Advocate, so like a B plus, they're saying very good. And then Rape Beer is saying 85 out of 100, so similar, good. But they're saying in the style, this winter type ale, 96 out of 100. That's pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Okay. Like, it's great. So this is a beer that you may or may not be able to get. I don't know how... I got this at World Market. So, mm. chances are you might be able to find it at a World Market. <laughs> yeah, 500 milliliter bottle and on draft. That's the only... It's no cans, no smaller bottles, nothing. I, I don't remember website. how much it cost, but it was... It's probably... No, I can't even pretend to guess. Sorry. Well, thanks for the gift. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Have I you tried it. any of the, no, those Alabama beers no, yet? No, but nope. Jean-Pierre was commenting, saying, I bet it's some of it's good people, huh? I said, yeah. And I said, trim tab. Oh, well, he's on the way back from um, New, New Jersey, so he, but he likes to promote the Mobile beers and the Alabama beers. Alabama has some really excellent breweries, I must say. Now, Iceland is a very old country. Uh, I would love to go. But it's only been independent for less than 75 years, and uh, that was in 1944. And that caused a little controversy because it had always been owned by Denmark. You know, those people that started it. And so then um, they had allowed them in 1918, 99 years ago, to become a self-governing part of the Kingdom of Denmark. Mm-hmm. They were they were always kind of, always kind of self governing, but they'd just be like an independent country within Denmark. But then during World War II, while Denmark was controlled by Germany, mm -hmm. they declared independence, and Denmark thought that was bad form. And it was like you could have waited till after Germany was gone before you declared independence. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like we we wouldn't have stopped you anyway. So why you had to do it? Why? Well, anyway. And the United States occupied Iceland during World War II, by the way. And that was a little controversy trying to get the U.S. to leave. But I, I just brought that up as a something to talk about, but let's go with the beer. <laughs> All right. It smells really nice. First, the color is brown, oh, right? Sorry. Yeah, that's like muddy brown. It's not much head of foam. It's, it's very murky. It's murky, and it's like light with, lighter brown with the light shining through it, but it's just like a muddy brown. It looks like a... Some swamp water or yeah, something. Yeah, like muddy water. Mm-hmm. But not muddy waters. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I would like to go, <laughs> and I would like to go to Iceland uh, and Denmark. Mm-hmm. And the Faroe Islands and Greenland. And Bornholm. I just Amsterdam. I'm just naming all D Danish territories around the world. Uh and you the may Netherlands. Not, you may not. Do you know who the United States bought the Virgin Islands from? No. Denmark. Great. In 1917. Okay. I wonder how the Virgin Islands feels about that. Oh, they probably didn't mind. All right. Um. <clears throat> it's definitely sweet. It's got almost like a cakey smell. Like yeah, like a spiced holiday cake. I say, but it's different than that. It's more. Man, this is going to be very hard to describe. <laughs> 
Oh, and by the way, this is the first video review for this beer in the world. Oh, very cool. I checked. Very cool. And there aren't many written reviews. It's like a candy. I was thinking sort of like, I don't know, maybe like a red velvet cake or like a kind of, I don't know. A syrupy sweet candy. Like a butterscotch candy or something. Oh, I really want to taste it because it smells so good. And to all my Icelandic friends, I don't want to, you to think that that little comment I made about the independence makes me anti-Icelandic. I don't think anyone would think that. It doesn't ma matter to me when countries declare independence. I mean, I, I, that's fine with me. Okay. I just thought I'd bring it up. All right. And probably shouldn't have brought it up. Now I regret it. Now it's already recorded. Okay. I really don't think anybody cares. <sighs> And just, just insult their people or anything. No. Ooh, this beer smells real good. It it does have a candy... I, I can't describe it. It even has a smokiness a little bit. Like some kind of molasses type? Yeah. Or to toffee? It doesn't smell like a beer. Now, of course, no, your grandfather, really he'd, say, it. he'd say it smells like beer, no matter what you give him. Okay, well, it does have maybe a beer under a smell, but it's mostly just some sweet candy prune juice type weird thing. Okay. Let's taste it. Uh. Oh, my God. This is so good. I do taste a kind of candy taste. Yeah. The, what, they talk about spruce or something. There is that kind of... Hand cut... Icelandic spruce Ooh. tips. Ooh, yeah. Oh, goodness. It's kind of like a marinade type thing. You could probably marinate meat in it, but I wouldn't pay that much for marinade. Um, it's a spiciness, Spicy. some underlying smoke. It's sweet. It's rich. It's got a really full mm. mouthfeel. Rich, syrupy. Yeah. It's got a peppery spice. Kind of. Maybe some kind of like... Maybe like a spice, dark, dark bread with like some jam on it. But it's not bready. More the bread crust. Yeah, like a jam or a marmalade. It's kind of jammy, or a yeah. Or chutney. Chutney. Oh, I love a good chutney. They sell mm. Cross and Blackwell chutney at, at Mathern's. Oh, the best um, I ever had was in or they Ireland. did. It was just like a jam. No, it was, they called it relish, never mind. They did have a lot of chutney, but I got a jar of this, like, tomato relish from the English market in Cork, oh. Ireland. Best, so delicious, so good. They would put it on sandwiches all over the place with, like, brie and arugula, and oh, I was so sad when I ran out. If anybody <laughs> wants to send me some tomato jam from the English market in Cork, Ireland, I will not say no. All right. <laughs> so good. Mmm. But back to this beer. The body's medium. It's to heavy, sweet, medium but it's not heavy, like medium ooh, medium sweet. Heavy. Like it's just medium to heavy. It's a Christmas miracle. There's a little, frankly. There's a little carbonation prickle. Mm -hmm. The finish is like medium dry to wet, right? It's mm -hmm. like not wet, not dry. It's not too sweet. It's not too dry and crisp. It's, it's like an a, ale. It's a it's a winter ale. It's eight percent. What do you expect? It's like okay. you walk alone in a forest and you find this like magical Christmas. Tree. Yeah, I like it way better than that. Snow that and wheat ale. cookies on the tree. Yeah, it's like a gingerbread cookie in some and ways. And this is the sap that comes out the Christmas. Yeah, a ginger. You want tree. some more? Yes. A gingerbread. I have to save some for the written review though. A gingerbread cookie without ginger. You know, it's weird. Well, that would be molasses. Gingerbread cookies are like basically just made of gingerbread and molasses. Oh yeah, okay. I wanted to make some this year and I kept Ooh, forgetting There is major sediment at the bottom, so I cannot wait. Gingerbread would, people. If I did a swish and pour, it's going to cloud this up mm. with more gunk. Believe me, it's not going to stay like semi-translucent. It's already murky, but it's going to get really like globbed. I um, wish I would have bought another bottle of this. It is so yeah, good. There's some definite candy sweetness. It's really <sighs> hard to describe, but... This is the best like winter holiday beer that I've had in a while. Well, I drank last night, Oof. that very night, just last night, I drank the Anchor. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, our special ale 2017. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, hit the second bottle, and I did like it more than this. And really? you didn't like it. You didn't like that. Because you said it was too bitter, remember? Oh. 
Yeah, that's like a old derelict Christmas tree in an abandoned lot somewhere. <laughs> well, I liked it, and I liked it twice, so what does that say about my taste <laughs> in beer? I okay. mean, it, it was fine. Don't, don't listen to me. But this beer is so good! I do like, the, like mm. it, though. I'll give it... Well, what are you going to score it? I mean, I'm going to give it an A+. Plus. Outstanding. Wow. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Whew. Mm. It's like rich without being too rich. It's like the spice and the like the bite without being like overwhelming. Yeah. And it's got the sweetness. It's just really, really nuanced, like well-balanced beer. Like They're saying 96 out of 100 Ooh. in the style. But I think I'll go more A minus, you know. I, I think that Beer Advocate and them, they're saying in the B range, the very good, and you're saying it out. But you got to call it as you see it. You don't worry mm. about the ratings. I get people sometimes jumping on my case, well, all the ratings say this. I say, I know, but this is my rating. All right. I mean, I just really like it. I don't throw out a lot of A pluses, really. So. Right. I'm going to say A minus. A minus is the lowest I would give it. But you wouldn't give it that because you're giving it an A+. Plus. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm saying A-, minus, but I'm saying it's, it's excellent. I mean, if you want to... It's not like a 100 A. It's like the A that's like A+, plus that's like a little above a regular A, you know, but it's so good. <clears throat> well, you know, it's you could say it's 100 A because uh, if it goes above 100, then it's world class. That's the way I look at it. World class means it's above 100. It's like you could, you made bonus points. Oh, Okay. You know what I mean? I get like when I used to give tests, I would give two essays, mm -hmm. and I say you got to write at least one, but you could write two. Mm -hmm. And then that girl Rachel, remember Rachel? She would always write. Maybe sometimes I'd have three essay choices. Well, of course she'd always write all three, mm -hmm. and they would be long and drawn out. And I'd say, oh good, I get to read them all. So I, read them all. <laughs> I was like, yes, that's true. Okay, all right. And then she'd say, but in my opinion, this is what I think also about it. And then. So then she'd end up making like 110 on the test. You know, she did everything right, maybe miss one question, and then get all these bonus points. All right, so that's what a world-class beer would be. It's perfect, and it's above that. Okay, so this is nearly perfect in your view. Okay. And I haven't had many world-class beers, but I have had some. That one made by the monks. West Flatarian 12. Oh, yes. That'd be world-class as much as it costs. <laughs> But it helped them build their roof, repair their roof, which was falling apart. So, all right. Anyway, so les les bon ton relay. Oh, that, it's got that, like, caramel or bread or something. It's I just infused some rose gin. I made the gin and then infused rose into it. Maybe I could sell that and all of you could buy it. Yeah, Not for gin. a roof, but... That gin you you oh, brought there. me from South Carolina that uh, that was an interesting. Uh, the gin aged in the bourbon. Yeah. Casks, yeah. Boy, that was something I'm else. Still working on it. That's, I don't drink it that often. Yeah, I try. Oh, that's right. You didn't bring it to me. I try it at your house. That's right. Uh, <laughs> but that thing was dynamite. All right. Anyway, uh, so lazy. Was, what was that brewery? Dark Dark Horse. Or something? something like that. And they had some other un unusual products. Mm -hmm. So lazy, lay bon ton relay. Uh, dynamite product, uh, no matter how you look at it, A plus, A minus, whatever. And y'all come on down. Ooh. We're going to end this review by saying y'all come on down to southeastern Louisiana. Bring a jacket. Bring a coat. Bring a coat.